Hi guys and welcome to another War Game Red Dragon tutorial video with me Bubblebox and today we're looking at the vehicle section in the deck system. Now the vehicles are a bit of a mishmash uh, of all different kind of types of units thrown into one part of the deck system, basically stuff they couldn't probably fit into anywhere else. However, having said that, there is a, quite a lot of crud but there's also some real gems in the vehicle section as well not to be missed especially i would say for the red four factions so we're going to do as we did in the other tutorials and have a look at the americans and at the russians as examples and you can have a look and extrapolate those to the uh, other factions in the game although with the vehicles as such a mishmash it is definitely worth having a look through each of the nations for these because um, as i say there are some real gems and i'm going to point out a couple of those at the end of this video so we'll start off with the americans and have a look at the fire support units first of all now the fire support units um really sort of a bit of everything including the infantry fighting vehicles a couple of kind of artillery an artillery kind of piece and some infantry uh, other types of auto cannons carrying infantry fighting vehicles and stuff like that but let's have a look anyway so the first one here is the m5 1a1 ontos not too impressed with this i have to say this is pretty one of the crud ones as i was saying earlier amongst the, uh, the a lot of crud and a few gems amongst the crud and i'll point them out this is a crud one um, it's got a very poor range actually of only 30 percent and with these types of interesting fighting vehicles you would look at for tank destroyers i suppose for sniping tanks for hiding in bushes so sniping and then moving and you definitely want to move these after they're fired because most of them have got quite poor armor and will be targeted by the enemy artillery so if you see these you're going to want to move them straight away after they're fired now this one was just a 30 percent accuracy probably might not hit in its first two maybe three shots at a tank and what you would do want your infantry fighting vehicles to do is hit the first time they fire so that they can stun and damage the tank slightly so the tank has trouble firing back before the um, infantry fighting vehicle with its anti-tank weapon can fire for a second and maybe even a third time before the tank manages to hit them because of their light armor so that's what you want to be really looking for in one of the anti-tank weapon vehicles and this does not measure up at all it's got very poor off-road speed as well terrible autonomy it's just a terrible weapon i mean ignore it man don't take it if i could delete a thing from the game i'd probably delete this next we've got the m15 sorry m163 cs now this really is a i would say sort of to supplement your anti-air i suppose but it can also shoot and stun at units as well and i've seen one of these with a vulcan gun on it sit in front of a t80u firing it doesn't do any damage to the t80u because these um, rounds just basically these 20 millimeter rounds just bounce off the shell of the TATU but the TATU sat there and was stunned basically the whole time until the Vulcan ran out of bullets so they're quite good at stunning <laughs> what I'm saying is they can stun um, armor piece armored pieces as well but the, what they're really used for is to supplement your anti-air they can stun and shoot down helicopters and they can stun airplanes that fly over as well and they're good for maybe ex sort of supporting late game pushes and late game rushes into the enemy to try and finish the game off and stuff like that so if you've got a spare sort of slot in your transport sorry in your vehicle section it could be worth getting some of these with these vulcan vulcan medium machine guns on because they're really fast firing and can do quite a lot of damage and they're only 20 points each you get quite a lot of them next we've got the com combat it's got an auto cannon only costs 30 it's not that well armored it's only it's got actually a 35 but it does quite a fight fast so it sort of makes up for it again it can shoot at helicopters and it supports ground units whether again whether you would take up a slot with this in your vehicle section as opposed to a diff, much better weapon you know i probably wouldn't i would consider and certainly consider the uh vulcan here but definitely probably wouldn't consider the convat definitely would not consider the on toss now the next one is kind of a tank artillery piece i suppose you would call it range of 2450 but it's got this unusual muzzle and it fires he rounds which have an area of effect and a power an he power of eight which is absolutely excellent and can be used for taking out infantry now i have tried this weapon and it's good 
in certain situations because it's quite hard to get into position and the reason it's hard to get in position is because it's very low speed off-road and when you're fighting against infantry and stuff you're probably going to be plodding around off-road trying to get this thing into position and the battle might be over by the time this thing gets into position although it has got a scoop for shoveling up the dead afterwards it's got decent front armor actually of 13 and an okay sort of side and back top armor and it's got a good ish or road speed it's just the off-road speed lets it down a little bit the autonomy has been put up a little bit it used to be less than that it's quite decent now so you can get around the map with these very large maps that i have on red dragon so yeah basically it's an anti-infantry artillery short range artillery piece it's only 45 you do get quite a lot of them if you're into micromanaging your units and sort of infantry pushes and you want something to support them this could be the boy for you i tend not to use it but hey you might have a got a funny back end as well you might have a different view then we've got these three things the v150 76 millimeter and this has got an auto cannon basically it's a it's an auto cannon platform poor armor um actually it's not too worried because it fires quite fast anyway um but yeah not the best thing in the world and you've got the upgraded v150 90 millimeter so slightly more powerful better accuracy but still not the best thing in the world i wouldn't put these in my deck really and then you've got the lav 25 um auto cannon can shoot at helicopters as well with a range of 1750 this one isn't too bad this is amphibious remember so and this has got quite um a good speed for an amphibious vehicle so we'll go fairly fast across rivers and across lakes as well so could want to consider this for sort of amphibious landings and things like that with its anti-helicopter and anti-ground power actually of 30 quite a fast fire rate so this wouldn't be too bad again you might want to get this with the uh, infantry inside rather than just get it as a slot in the vehicle section itself so let's move on and have a look at the flamethrowers now the flamethrowers I do put these into my deck sometimes and I always forget to use them um, but they can be immensely unit, uh, useful again probably if you're better at microing than me then you probably want to go for something like this to support your infantry pushes or kill infantry you know any infantry any infantry that comes across this is going to be scared unless it's got ATGM rockets to destroy it the range is basically it fires um, incendiary ammo and they can fire directly or indirectly and can inflict terrible damage to infantry when even if those infantry are in buildings or in trees tree lines or in forests this thing can be deadly to infantry it's got a little bit of armor with 5311 and uh actually of 30 i mean actually don't worry too much it just splays its sort of fire around anyway um it's got lots of lots of rounds um its suppression is immense and it's got a decent he power as well so if you're into microing and remember the range of 1050 is longer than any of the ranges of the rifle infantry rpgs which would just normally destroy armored vehicles if they get too close um so obviously if there's a specific atgm infantry they can destroy this but if it's just riflemen and special forces and things like this that they have to get quite close to this to be able to destroy it and by that time this thing is going to have fired its fire upon them so these are the dragons of the game i suppose the zippo is sort of the downgraded version i would definitely go for the um the tank like version the zip the zippo is more sort of an armored car with the same weapon stuck on top um, but it hasn't got the armor so it can't take much of a hit if it gets hit or artillery or something it's gonna just die so but it's only 30 points here of the tank version so not too expensive and if you fancy something like that in your deck definitely go for it definitely try it out anyway they're fun to use and if they work they're really fun to use so moving on let's have a look at the tank destroyers now these are one of my favorites these are really good for sniping and uh, scooting away afterwards um, tank snipers really decent ranges most of them and smallish side sizes for hiding in cover generally either medium or small size they are lightly armored though and are vulnerable to artillery fire so first of all we've got the lav at with the ito now we remember the itos we had a look at them when we had a look at the uh, bradley's in the recon section really nice weapons the toe the ito and the toe two don't forget those very accurate weapons very highly good ap power on those weapons with the upgrade as you go from the toe to the ito to the toe two 
really nice sort of range, accuracy, AP power, fire at 10, 1 every 10 seconds, good off-road speed. This again, it's the old lav again. And when people have American decks, you see these lavs everywhere. People are laving the lav, I have to say. And uh, yeah, I see these all the time when people have US decks and often with Blue 4 decks as well. And then we have the M150. And this is basically, um, I guess, a lightly armored vehicle with an uh, tow missile on the top of it. Brilliant tow missile, very lightly armored though, so very vulnerable. In fact, all of these next few we're going to talk about, and the LAV-80 as well, I suppose, very vulnerable to artillery barrages. Autonomy is not brilliant on this one either, um, but it's got the nice tow missile and it's only 35 points. Um, and then we've got the upgrade of that, which is the M901 ITV with the ITO missile this time. So it's pretty much very, very similar, slightly better armoured. Um, everything else looks pretty much exactly the same. Just the armour is slightly upgraded and the weapon is upgraded to an ITO, which has a better accuracy, of course, and a better AP power than the basic TOW missile. And then we upgrade that slightly further to the M901A1 ITV. And this time it's got the uh, same armor, so the upgraded from the previous version, but the same armor as the M901 ITV. Um, all the other stats are pretty much exactly the same. The autonomy does let this down a little bit on very big maps when you've got to get this thing around. It is amphibious, although slowly amphibious, um, but it is still amphibious. But it's got the TOW 2 missile, the most upgraded of the TOWs. Very, very powerful weapon. 12 of them as well. All of these have got 12 missiles. So as long as you can keep them alive and away from artillery fire and from tanks hitting them, then these are going to last, um, you know, going to be able to fire for a, a long time before they run out of ammunition. Accuracy of 70% and 25 AP power. These are immensely powerful for only 75 points if you can keep them alive, of course. And then we've got these Jeeps. Oops. Um, the M151A2 tow basically a jeep with a tow so you've got the jeep this time you've got no armor at all um a much much better autonomy though if we just put the uh, pin that and put the upgrade version up uh, up there as well with the ito you can see the autonomy is a thousand k's so it can get around the map all day long but it's only got four missiles this time instead of the 12 that it had previously so they are a lot le a lot less expensive but they've still got the best really nice weapons but they're just really weak if they get hit basically so you've got to keep them out of harm's way so if you think you can do that you might want to go for these cheap ones but and then you might say well if i lose it it's only 20 30 points you've got the so the humvee here with the most upgraded tow 2 these are 50 points so these are reasonably expensive again no armor just a fast vehicle for getting around in decent autonomy not the thousand of the jeeps but still okay at 500 k's and uh, again the uh, upgraded tow 2 missile so it depends how many points you want to spend to bring these things in uh, in the game so that's it for the americans so let's have a look at the Russians for vehicle section for the Red 4 side and we'll start off having a look at the fast support and we've got the ASU-85M. It's a self-propelled gun. It's pretty crappy to be honest. It's got an accuracy of 30%, AP power of 9, no stabilizer, AG power of 3. <sighs> Very limited uses. It not even that useful as a spam tank because it's only got a speed of 45 off-road and an autonomy of 360 so it wouldn't get very far before it ran out of fuel so probably one to be avoided unless you're absolutely desperate for a spam tank then we've got the i'm going to go through the first few fairly quickly they're not too impressive the btr 152E ZPTU 3 very old fashioned looking vehicle vehicle with a medium machine gun propped on top um, can shoot at helicopters I suppose only 10 points so very very cheap you get 20 of them but yeah it's very poorly armoured it's got poor off road speed it's not great avoid I would say and then you've got the upgraded version with 15 points um, what's upgraded what is upgraded 
not even the armor what's upgraded on this oh the fire rate basically tripled the fire rate here or almost tripled the fire rate um but i don't think that's going to improve on this weapon a great deal to be honest so not the greatest thing in the world um in my opinion then the btr 70 zalo is kind of a tanky armored it's not a tank it's sort of an armored truck tank it's got wheels but it looks like a tank yeah it's got a main gun anyway uh minimum range main gun at 1925 but still still a decent range against a sort of armored trucks and light tanks i suppose decent dish accuracy at 40 percent it's got a stabilizer ap power is pretty poor so you're only gonna be able to battle with light tanks really and um armored cars and infantry fighting vehicles things like that um, as long as they don't get the shots off first of course because they'll certainly take this thing out because it's got very weak armor two front one side one back and one top now it's only 30 points but i wouldn't take this over and above some of the other units that are available for the red four and russian units in my vehicles deck to be honest then they've got the waz basically a jeep with a recallless rifle on the top the spg9 very very short range 1750 very poor accuracy not very good ap power pretty terrible unit 10 points but it's only 10 points but it's terrible are you ever going to hit anything with this and you know it's just it's just terrible it's atrocious don't even look at it don't don't even look at it don't even look at this thing it doesn't even deserve to be in the game don't take it then we've got the afghanski now the afghanski some people love them and some people hate them and i love them i think they're fantastic weapons because you get a lot of them and they're only 20 points and they've got this apz 23 armor quad auto cannon which can do a lot of damage to infantry and it's great at stunning as well and suppressing uh, it can shoot at helicopters it can shoot at a decent ish kind of range it can shoot at airplanes it can go which i really like pretty much anywhere it can go anywhere up mountains across sort of um it can't go across water but it can go up mountains it can go through any forests and stuff like that with your infantry supporting your infantry through forests i love it for that role so it's really multifunctional unit for only 20 points you get a lot of them uh, the rate of fire is really high if you can get near the enemy now the autonomy and the speed are a little bit poor on this so you do are going to have to resupply these if you're pushing them very far up the map or for any distance but i often have these in my deck to supplement my anti-air units now i said there are a few gems in this game and this is one of them the bmpt this is a fantastic unit and if you don't have this in your Russian deck because it is a prototype only available in the Russian deck if you don't have this you are completely insane and don't know anything about Wargame Red Dragon in my opinion. It's one of the best weapons for 70 points. It's got these fantastic grenade launchers which can shoot against ground units and also against helicopters and will stun pretty much most things. Strength of 10 as well, decent off-road speed, medium size, and it's got a fantastic main gun and an auto cannon as well. So it's got a bit of everything. It's got a range, good range on its main gun with an accuracy of 45% and a stabilizer for shooting mainly at infantry, of course, because it fires sort of just, well, HE rounds, really. Um, but the auto cannon will destroy infantry as well and will shoot at helicopters. So if you come across a helicopter, you can shoot at that as well with this. Um, it's really fast firing this um, auto cannon or pretty fast firing anyway and all of these three weapons in combination decimate industry uh, 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 infantry and it's got a fantastic front armor as well so it can take a few rpgs in the face and still engage the enemy an awesome weapon really good putting through trees you can put this through forests you can support infantry pushes with this it's a brilliant weapon have it in your russian decks for definite and moving on to the flamethrowers so like the um american the russians have got flamethrowers no not all factions have got flamethrowers you have to look at the individual things to have a look and the tow 55 we'll have a look at first i think the tow 55 is very similar to the basic american flame tank very similar stats it's got uh, the napalm launcher or gun or whatever you want to call it 
what's it called flamethrower oh yes flamethrower um with a range of 1050 of course it's outranges as i've said previously the rpgs of the rifle infantry and well i've said it all already will decimate infantry if it can get a shot off at the infantry with decent armor again looks like slightly better armor or the same or slightly better armor than the american decent autonomy a bit slow off-road but it's just need to get this into position somehow and it's got a nice ish kind of main gun with a minimum range it's there to supplement really but can sort of protect itself a little bit i suppose if it comes up against armored vehicles where the infantry have just dropped off from then you've got the upgraded tow 62 which the upgrade really i think is to where's the upgrade the main weapon which is the imp the uh napalm launcher is the fire the flamethrower is exactly the same Got slightly better accuracy on the main gun but a slightly worse rate of fire so really yeah it's just a slightly better main gun although it might be worth just taking the tow 55 oh they're actually they're both exactly the same price that's why yeah so the main gun is just a trade-off between rate of fire and accuracy i guess everything else seems pretty much the same the autonomy is slightly less on the tow 62 slightly better i'd probably go for the tow 55 to be honest on this slightly older vehicle but looks actually slightly better in my opinion and then we've got another gem it's the burrettino i love the burrettino it's a fantastic weapon it looks awesome it is of course classed as a flamethrower in this game but it is really a rocket artillery piece that fires napalm rounds with a decent dispersion um fantastic he power and decimates infantry decimates anything it fires upon will suppress anything in the area which it fires you get a couple of these in your deck you can even get like two sets of two in your deck so you can have four of these on the battlefield and all firing into a zone where you want to assault or they're really really useful as well for slowing down enemy pushes fire a couple of these in the way of an enemy push and they will go no further because they can't drive well they can drive through the flames some tanks can but they're going to get suppressed and then picked off hopefully on the other side by your choppers and stuff if you've got any sense downsides of burrettinos aren't many one is that they're very expensive at 140 and if the enemy sees your burrettinos they will target them yes indeed they will especially if they're a good player so you've got to shoot shoot and scoot again so fire these things and then get them well back because they take a long time to rearm so you can afford just to move them all the way back get them to somewhere safe get a chopper to them or something a supply chopper or even take them all the way back to your fob get them resupplied and then move them up again they can only fire about once in every five minutes or something like that so you're not going to be able to use these use these specific situations when you need them either just previous to an assault or to prevent one of the, some of their units assaulting or to take a specific town something like that a really really nice weapon and if you don't have these and the uh bmpts in your deck the russian deck you're insane you're insane if you don't take them and next we've got the tank destroyers and the russians have got some quite nice tank destroyers maybe not quite as good as the american ones although very similar um you've got first of all the maliuk the brom to malayutka p now the maliutkas aren't the best anti-tank weapons in the world um, but they're sort of just okay they've got a decent-ish kind of accuracy AP power is decent-ish at 15 you get 18 of them though 30 points you get 18 of these things uh, the reload time isn't the fastest um, so these aren't the best they've got a good off-road speed though and a decent autonomy but if you want to go for them probably go for the conkers and that's the upgraded version here we'll have a look at the conkers the brom to conkers so the conquer is a better anti-tank weapon you get 10 of them decent ish range again you can sit again these are fire and scoot hide somewhere in a bush fire and then move to some another position before they get artillery because we have with all of these like the americans very poor on the old armor uh actually 45 percent ap power 20 really nice decent off-road speed and then you've got the upgraded brom 2 conkers m like it goes like tow i tow tow two you got like kong you got you got like uh, maliutka then you got conkers and the conkers m so good accuracy really nice ap power again slightly more expensive 10 points more for this better weapon really everything else all the other stats pretty much exactly the same and then we've got yet another gem yes yet another one for russia russia's got some fantastic vehicles it's the mtlb sturm 
S is that or five, but the Sturm. We call them the Sturm. Um, why are they good? Well, because of their range. A range, they're an anti-tank weapon, got a recoilless rifle sitting there on the top. This co ATGM co Cocon. Cocon? Are you serious? I never noticed that before. Okay. It's got this has got a cock on and it's got a range of 2,800 meters, which will outrange any NATO tank. And it's got an axi of 55%, fantastic, and an AP power of 20, fantastic. Again, poor armor. It's going to get artillery, it's going to get targeted if seen. They only cost 50, get 12 missiles with a fantastic range, a fantastic accuracy, and a fantastic AP power. Put these in pairs and they're going to take out any armor push as long as they don't get arted or taken out by planes so make sure you have your anti-air around remember they haven't got any defenses against infantry as well so if infantry creep up on these they're going to take them out so as long as they're protected they're going to do really really well for you and stop any enemy heavy tank pushes coming your way a really really nice weapon there then we step down a bit and it's the su12254 uh Another self kind of self propelled gun, really. Um, nothing really to say about this. It's got a very poor AP power, terrible accuracy, and it's got an HP power of five. So I suppose this would be, if used at all, it would be used against infantry, not against anything else. It's got heat rounds, so fired at maximum range, stuff like that. And it's got a little machine gun there. Oh, is that an auto cannon? Oh, it's a heavy machine gun, and a heavy machine gun as well. Poor autonomy and poor speed really don't make this a very good weapon at all. It has got like this heavy machine gun, I suppose, if you want to spam something, but not for me. Not for me, that one. Then you got the Z515 uh, Norov. Um, again, another one I've never really used, although it looks like it's got a fairly decent main gun for something that's only 35 points with a range of 2100, actually 50%. It's even got a stabilizer. The AP is letting it down a little bit poor armor as well but decentish speed and autonomy this time for getting around um so not too shabby but whether you in a russian deck or a, is a russian prototype whether in a russian deck you would use up one of your slots for this over and above another unit um i don't know i really don't then you've got the jeeps again with their uh, atgm weapons latched on top you've got the waz 469 Factoria um, Factoria missile range okay ish accuracy okay ish AP power decent again remember if you take these jeeps as your anti-tank weapons very poorly armored one shot from an artillery piece this is saying it's going to blow up sky high but they have got good autonomy these jeeps and good speed off-road as well then you've got the uh, conkers this time so the same kind of jeep this time you've got your conkers missile so an upgrade on the missile a bit like the top ones like the maluka conquer conquer this time we're going factoria then then conquer missile which is exactly the same as the one already previously described except this time you've got it on an unarmed jeep which is really fast but unarmed unarmored should i say and then you got the waz 469 conquers m with the top range conquers m atgm missile and everything else pretty much exactly the same, but very, very poor armor. So I think that's about it for the Russians. And I've got one more gem to show you, and it's this guy, the WZ-550. It's a Chinese unit, so if ever you get the Chinese deck or the Red Dragons deck, which is the Chinese and the North Koreans, always go for this in your vehicles it's just look at the stats look at the range 2975 meters for this hj9 hj9 anti-tank gun missile accuracy 70 percent ap power 26 this is going to outrange and outfire any tank it's got a decent dish reload time also of 10 seconds so it'll probably get a couple of shots off even before the tank gets a chance to respond so this is the devil to any um blue four tank push when dealing with a red dragon or a chinese deck
It is amphibious as well. It's got decent autonomy, good off-road speed. So once you fire it, move it, get it under into another covered position, and it will do you very well. Eight missiles as well, but keep this well stocked up. Keep it safe because if Blue Force see this guy and they know anything about the game, they're definitely going to want these dead as soon as possible. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.